What's good, you guys? Your boy, Bill Mahari here, representing Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Hope y'all been having a good uh, week thus far to start out the Monday, man. And hope y'all had a great uh, Thanksgiving with your family and friends. And uh, hope y'all had, had enough good food to eat and try to burn off them calories as best you can, man. And uh, yeah, we're just on the way towards the holiday season. So I know there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be planning on, you know, all that Christmas shopping and whatnot. Just make sure to budget accordingly. But this time, we're going to talk about football in this sense. And I wanted to talk about my hometown team, the Minnesota Vikings. To say that I've been surprised with the Minnesota Vikings this year is pretty much an understatement. If you would have asked me at the start of the year, I would have pretty much said, I just hope that the team just performs well. I would have seen them at best at the middle of the pack. But at 8-2, and two, it's just... It's been a crazy, crazy year to say the least. And to say that it's been a roller coaster would have not done not done itself a justice. It's been a pretty much a huge wave of just unexpected moments throughout the entire season, to say the least. And I pretty much have been impressed with the resiliency and the determination of this Vikings team. For them to be at eight and two right now. And behind, and stay behind, and basically behind the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC is an accomplishment in of itself. Because I never, because looking at the start of the year, I had the Packers coming out of the NFC North. You know, as a Vikings fan, of course, I've always pretty much looked at you know as Rodgers. When you have Rodgers as your quarterback, you're always going to have a chance. But the fact that Rodgers has not performed well this year, the wideouts have not performed well, and the defense has suffered because of it the Packers have pretty much struggled throughout the year. And looking at the Vikings this year, I've been pretty much been impressed by, you know, the dynamics of our passing attack, especially when you have unbelievable wideouts like Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. Can we make Justin Jefferson the MVP at this stage right now? Because what Justin Jefferson has been able to do this year has been unbelievable. Justin Jefferson is <laughs> His hands are like a is like glue. Any ball that you throw at him, he will catch it. And in the game against Buffalo, he impressed the heck out of me. You know, I unfortunately I have not been able to watch him as much as I should have. But the fact that he's been able to perform at this level has been unbelievable. And when you look at his receiving stats, um, with his record breaking year. He already broke Randy Moss's records for the most receiving yards in the first three seasons of his career. When I'm talking about Randy Moss, Randy Moss was my guy back in the day. He was one of the most dynamic receivers to ever play the game. And that rookie year he had was just amazing. But in the first three years of his, of his career, when you look at it, he remember, he had the 17 touchdowns in his rookie year. But in the first three years of his career, Randy Moss, let me pull this up real quick. So Randy Moss right now, he at Randy Moss pretty much in the first two de- first three years of his career, um, Randy Moss had over 4,163 receiving yards in his first three years. Justin Jefferson at this stage right now in his first three years of his career, and let me pull that up real quick. In his first three years of his career, the man has pretty much succeeded what Manny Moss already did, but even better. Right now, at this stage, he already surpassed him with over 4,248 receiving yards. And And we have six more games to go of the year. This guy has been unbelievable, to say the least. But I gotta give some credit too to Kirk Cousins in this aspect. Yeah, he would make he would make dumb throws that would leave you scratching your head, but for the most part, he's done a really good job of passing the ball and pretty much making good decisions with the ball in his hands. That's been one of the big setbacks I've always had about Kirk Cousins ever since they the Vikings gave him that massive contract the year after we made the NFC Championship game with uh, Case Keenum, but. The other things that I'm seeing with this Vikings team is that they always feel like no matter what deficit they go through, other than the Cowboy blowout loss, of course, they always feel like they still have a chance to win the game 
no matter what the situation is. But I hope that they don't get comfortable with that because there's going because just what the Cowboys did to them uh, two weeks ago, they pretty much put the focus focus back into the Vikings that they can't get blown out. Now, here's one of the concerns I have with the Vikings. The problem I see with the Vikings is, is that they're not a heavy running team. Now, yes, we do have a very dynamic running back in Dalvin Cook. But the problem with the Vikings offenses offenses is that we don't run the ball a lot. And it's the and the reason is, is that we don't have a very good offensive line that can pretty much make the holes on the running lanes necessary for uh for uh, Dalvin Cook to you know break open a, a huge gain other than the 83 yard um run he had against Buffalo he's been kind of you know not had opportunities to get in down the field and do and do what he does best and being one of the most dynamic and versatile running backs in the league but the other problem that I think that's going to be more addressed as you know as we head down to the home stretch of the year has been the defense now in terms of the run defense, the Vikings are pretty much middle of the pack. But the problem I'm seeing with the Vikings defense is, is the passing attack. Now look, now think about this for a moment. You're eight and two, right? But the uh, Minnesota Vikings, as a pass defense, have given up at least this, you know, it's the sec, pretty much the most passing yards. Of the of the all thirty two teams in the NFL this year, they've given up at least three thousand uh, thirty seven three thousand thirty thirty seven yards the entire season, which illustrates several things. One, that opposing teams can move the ball through the air against this team because their defensive backs are not good at press coverage. If you get the, our defensive backs on one-on-one -on -one positions, they typically get beat a lot. Now, I know we always had good safeties like Harrison Smith and Patrick uh, Peterson to pretty much help try to raise some of those mistakes. But unfortunately, what we what we what you saw in the uh, Philadelphia game early in the year and against Dallas, if you're able to move the ball freely against the passing against the uh, secondary you pretty much have better opportunities to score. And so the other concern I have here is, is that the uh, defensive line is pretty much decent with, you know, with Delvin Cook, you know, commanding the edges, but they're not a dynamic defensive line that's going to put consistent pressure on the quarterback. And the big problems I see here is, is that if we have to go against teams like the 49ers and the Buccaneers that are starting to get healthy at the right time right now, you know, I have a very, very bad feeling that if we had to face one of those teams early in the divisional playoffs, we're going to probably run into some problems. And the Philadelphia Eagles are probably the most dynamic offense in the entire NFL. And I'm telling you off the rip, you guys, that the, uh, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles could be the Vikings kryptonite if they don't get the defensive uh, issues straightened out before then. But there's about six games to go in the year, so hopefully things could change. But those are the concerns I have with the Vikings. You could move the ball. You know, you could play ground and pound style with their with their defensive line. And also, once you have your passing, your uh, running game established, you can pretty much go through the air against this Viking secondary. And typically, a lot of times, they get beat. I mean, in the game on Thanksgiving against the uh, New England Patriots. Let me pull this up real quick. In the same game against the uh, New England Patriots, let's pull up the stats of that game. Okay. So in that same stats in that game, so Mac Jones pretty much attempted, he attempted 39 passes and completed 28 of them and had 382 yards in the air and scored two touchdowns in that game. Now, rewind that to the previous week against the uh, Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott, of course. In that game, when we got, when the team got blown off 40 to three, Dak Prescott only missed three passes. So literally he was two, tw tw 22 or 25 or 226, 20, two, for 276 yards and two touchdowns. And 
the other component that I think people are miss are don't seem to seem to talk about enough is that Dallas also exposed another weakness of the Vikings is, is that if you can ground and pound against that defense, it it's susceptible to get beat. So those are the main concerns I have for the Vikings as we're heading down to the home stretch of the regular season. Now, I hope that, you know, I'm wrong. I hope that they can figure this out because honestly, we've been waiting for a Super Bowl for the for the latest of times. But these are things I'm gonna be looking for as we are down to the final six games of the season. And and now we're at this point, we know that the division is gonna be locked up to the Vikings. Now it's just a matter of how, if they're going to have a first round bye, or they're going to have to play the first round, and are they going to get their defensive issues figured out? Because trust me, those teams are going to watch those tapes, and they're going to figure out a way to expose that very bad defense. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think about the Vikings this year, and what do you think what needs to be done for the Vikings to improve their chances to win the Super Bowl? So let me know what you think in the comment section below. With that, I'm out. Peace.